Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 30th of March. India continues to record over 50,000 daily COVID-19 cases, ramps up vaccination efforts. Taliban still reviewing US proposed Afghan peace plan, no date set for Turkey summit. And Nepal shuts all schools as air pollution hits alarming levels. And now for all the details. At a time when India is picking up the pace of its immunization campaign by simplifying the process and opening more vaccination centers, the country is also reporting surge in coronavirus cases that has brought the highest tallies of daily cases and deaths in months. India on Tuesday recorded more than 56,200 new infection cases and 271 infection-related deaths in the last 24 hours. India recorded 56,211 new COVID-19 cases and 271 infection-related deaths in the last 24 hours, the Health Ministry data showed on Tuesday. According to the Health Ministry, over 78% of the new cases were reported from six states, including Maharashtra, Punjab, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and Gujarat. This comes as India after a very slow start has accelerated its immunization campaign as Prime Minister Narendra Modi expanded it by getting an injection himself and rules for recipients got simplified. Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan along with his wife also had his second dose of COVID-19 jab on Tuesday. He said both vaccines, Covishield and Covaxin are safe and effective and that people should not be hesitant taking them. Dose lene ke 30 minute ke baad aaj aur pehli dose ke lene se lekar aur aaj tak hum dono mein se kisi ko bhi kisi bhi prakar ka koi bhi side effect nahi hua hai. Mainne ye baad pehle bhi kai baar kahi hai कि भारत में जो वैक्सीन्स लगाई जा रही हैं, दोनों वैक्सीन्स पूरी तरह से सेफ हैं, इम्यूनोजेनिक हैं, एफेक्टिव हैं। इंडिया एम्स टू इम्यूनाइज एटलीस्ट 300 मिलियन ऑफ इट्स 1.35 बिलियन पीपल बाय अगस्त। फ्रॉम अप्रैल वन डी कंट्री विल एक्सपैंड डी इनोक्यूलेशन एफर्ट बाय इंक्लूडिंग and not just the sick and the elderly. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday addressed rallies in poll-bound Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Poducherry where elections are slated to be held on 6th of April. Opposition Congress Party leader Priyanka Gandhi Wadra also campaigned for the first time in South India on Tuesday and held an election rally and corner meetings in Kerala. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday addressed rallies in Pol Pound, Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Puducherry, where elections are slated to be held on 6th of April. Addressing a gathering of thousands of people in Tamil Nadu's Dharapuram, Prime Minister Modi said his ruling BJP-led National Democratic Alliance or NDA has development as their agenda while opposition parties have dynasty agenda and nothing positive to offer apart from spreading lies. On one hand, NDA has our development agenda. On the other hand, the Congress and DMK have their own dynasty agenda. The speeches of their leaders have nothing positive to offer. Earlier in the day, Prime Minister Modi also launched a sharp attack on the ruling left Democratic Front in Kerala as he peached people to vote for Metro man E. Sridharan, who he said has devoted himself to Kerala's progress. Meanwhile, Opposition Congress Party's General Secretary Priyanka Gandhi Vadra also campaigned for the first time in South India on Tuesday and held an election rally and corner meetings in parts of Kerala state. In news from Pakistan. 
Pakistan reported 100 coronavirus-associated deaths for the first time in over three months on Tuesday, taking the countrywide death tally to 14,300. This comes as Pakistan launched its vaccine drive against the deadly virus earlier this month, inoculating health workers and high-risk age groups, but it is facing setbacks from vaccine hesitancy and delays in vaccines arriving in the country. Pakistan on Tuesday reported at least 100 coronavirus-associated deaths for the first time in over three months, taking the countrywide death tally to 14,300. The country last reported 100 deaths on December 23, 2020. Health experts have raised concerns over the surge in coronavirus cases, as Pakistan has so far reported 663,200 confirmed virus cases, including that of its president, Arif Alvi, two weeks after he received his first dose of an unnamed vaccine against the infection. Amid the rising cases, authorities over the past weekend had announced a complete ban on holding wedding functions, both indoor and outdoor, starting April 5 in areas that have a three-day rolling average of an 8% positivity ratio. Pakistan launched its vaccine drive earlier this month, inoculating health workers and high-risk age groups. But it is facing setbacks from the vaccine hesitancy and delays in vaccine arriving in the country. Moving on. Residents of Pakistan-administered Kashmir have expressed anger over construction of so-called developmental projects in the illegally occupied region, which have not brought any social or economic benefits to them. They blamed Islamabad has only plundered their natural resources over the years, completely ignoring their plight. Residents of Pakistan-administered Kashmir have expressed anger over construction of dams and other so-called developmental projects in the illegally occupied region and the government's apathy to provide their social and economic benefits to the local population. Mohammad Altaf Bert, an ex-candidate of the local assembly, said Pakistan assured that Neelam Jhelum hydropower project will bring development and job opportunities but it has only brought environmental degradation, hours of load shedding, lack of drinking water along with turning the roaring rivers into small rivulets or drains. We are not taking it. In और ये मकामी हकूक को बिल्कुल नजरअंदाज किया गया आज नीलम जलम प्रोजेक्ट से जहां से वो टनल गुजर रही है उन गांव में पानी खुश्क हो गया वापदा को कोई परेशानी नहीं कि वो लोग माइग्रेट कर रहे हैं हिजरत कर रहे हैं अल्ताफ बट फर्दर एक्सप्रेस्ड कंसर्न ओवर द प्रपोज्ड कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द कोहाला हाइड्रो पावर प्रोजेक्ट ऑन रिवर झेलम ही सेड द सिचुएशन इज पॉइज्ड टू डिटीरियोरेट विद द राइज इन एनर्जी डिमांड्स ऑफ पाकिस्तान which has been ruthlessly plundering the natural resources in the illegally occupied region. In news from Afghanistan, at a time when Afghans are hopeful that the Turkey conference will be significant for Afghanistan's future, no such date and the agenda has been confirmed for the big summit. The Taliban has said it is still reviewing a US proposed peace plan and that they want to reach an acceptable and practical result in this respect. The final dates and the agenda for the Turkey conference, which is expected to decide Afghanistan's fate, have not been finalized, but it is expected that the big event will be held in early April. The US Secretary of State Antony Blinken has reiterated that there has to be some kind of political settlement in Afghanistan and that is it should be done by Afghan themselves. Blinken noted that the summit will be held in the upcoming weeks. Meanwhile, a Taliban spokesperson, Mohammad Naeem, said the group is still reviewing a U.S. proposed peace plan and that they want to reach an acceptable and practical result in this respect. So far, the Afghan government and the Taliban have not stated who will represent them at the Turkey conference. But head of the High Council for National Reconciliation, Abdullah Abdullah, has said the upcoming conference is a unique opportunity for peace and that he hopes it will help 
form an agreement on ceasefire in the country. Nepal has ordered schools to close for four days after air pollution climbed to hazardous levels, forcing millions of students to stay home across the country. Over the weekend, pollution levels hit their highest since 2016 in capital Kathmandu. Nepal has ordered schools to close for four days after air pollution climbed to hazardous levels, forcing millions of students to stay home across the country. Over the weekend, pollution levels hit their highest in capital Kathmandu since the government began keeping records in 2016. Education Ministry spokesperson Deepak Sharma said about 8 million students have been affected by the closures. The 24-hour average level of PM2.5 fine particulate matters that can reach deep into the lungs was 214 micrograms per cubic meter in the upscale area of Baisepati in Kathmandu on Sunday. That compares with a government standard level of 40 micrograms per cubic meter. अब यो अवस्थामा चाहिँ नि हामी सबै अभिभावकहरुलाई आफ्नो बालबालिकाहरुलाई घर भित्रै रहनको लागि घर भित्रै राख्नको लागि किनभने यो बाहिर निस्केपछि स्वास्थ्यमा प्रतिकूल असर पर्छ यो धुवा धुलो को कारणले त्यसैले अभिभावकहरुलाई चाहिँ नि एयर पोल्युसन इज अ क्रोनिक प्रब्लम इन द र्यापिडली ग्रोइंग क्यापिटल सिटी अफ काठमाडौँ एन्ड एन एडिशनल हेडेक फर द गभर्नमेन्ट दट इज स्ट्रगलिंग टु कन्टेन द क्रोना भाइरस पेन्डेमिक the health ministry has advised people must stay safe indoors and not come out except for emergencies. In news from Sri Lanka, the Colombo Fashion Week, one of Sri Lanka's most extravagant fashion events, concluded in the Sri Lankan capital Colombo over the past weekend. During the three-day event, 21 designers showcased their collections, themed Week of Circularity. The Fashion Week aimed to propel Sri Lanka's fashion design industry to and make fashion products more relevant in a new environment. In the last two decades, the Colombo Fashion Week has led the way in South Asia in pushing the boundary and presenting fashion that leads the industry. Sikh devotees across India on Monday celebrated the annual spring festival of Hola Mohalla with prayers and display of traditional martial arts. The festival commemorates the transformation of the community into a martial fraternity by Guru Gobind Singh, the 10th spiritual leader of the Sikhs. Sikh devotees across India celebrated the annual spring festival of Hola Mahalla on Monday with prayers and display of sword fights and martial arts. Hundreds of devotees gathered at the Golden Temple, the holiest shrine of Sikhism in Amritsar city, despite the coronavirus pandemic, to offer prayers and pay their respects to the holy book of Sikhs, Guru Granth Sahib, which was carried in a decorated palanquin in a procession in the night. The devotees sprayed perfume and showered flower petals on the palanquin, known as Palki Sahib, which carries the Guru Granth Sahib. Earlier in the day, groups of Nihangsa Sikh warrior order displayed their valor and skills in ancient warfare and sword fighting known as Gatka in a colorful procession to mark the occasion in Pooch city of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir. Hula Mahalla commemorates the transformation of Sikh community into a martial fraternity by Guru Gobind Singh, the 10th spiritual leader of the Sikhs. It coincides with Holi, the Hindu festival of colors. Holi Maleda Nagar Kirtan Kade Gene or Esvele Asi Nakandi Sark the Chok, which Jete Nyangdal Jerene, who open traditional weapons than all, who Pardashni Karene. Six make up about 2% of India's nearly 1.3 billion population, but they have a majority in the northern Punjab state and a sizable population in Indian capital New Delhi. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.